Hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight we have Harry's embarrassing defeat in his eternal quest for police protection in the UK and furthermore, his international protected person status. Prince Harry loses high court security battle against Home Office in major blow for Duke of Sussex. The Duke of Sussex fight to secure to secure a judicial review over a decision that he should not be allowed to pay privately for his protective security has ended in defeat. Harry will now be unable to bring a second high court challenge against the Home Office. The Home Office opposed the idea of allowing wealthy people to buy security from the police for obvious reasons. This ruling followed a one-day high court hearing in London last week. So, Harry, back to spare one. Uh, to be fair, none of this is surprising in the least, although we have interesting reactions, opinions, and insights. Larissa Bona on Twitter, the judge said to Harry, I'm growing old, not getting crazy. Police is not gone for hire. P.S. This is a win for Harry. This is all he wanted all along. He never wanted to pay for his security. Now he has the excuse that justice didn't let him pay for his security. Just a PR stunt. And of course, there comes the question. How is this a win for Harry? Well, she continues. He always knew he would lose this. He just wanted the narrative that he tried to pay for the justice did not let him. He always wanted public funded security. But it doesn't mean that the judge's decision is wrong. He made the right choice. Police isn't gone for hire. Now, this is something that I have been saying for ages in regards to Harry's case against the Met, or whoever was in charge of telling him to go away. This is one of the comments you could find under one of the original GB News article. I can see from the comments that no one has bothered to read the article. He accepts it is not the taxpayer's responsibility to fund his security. He would like to pay for armed protection himself. But Home Office says no, so next time you slam Harry for not visiting his dad. <sighs> this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of people I have to deal with daily on Twitter. They claim that they have read, read the articles or the tweets or the threads, but this is zero reading comprehension. And if they have reading comprehension, they lack common sense. And that is pretty much a scientifically accurate description of the demographics of those who still, for some reason, defend Harry and Meghan. But the main problem is Harry is facing is that in terms of the law in Britain, he's being qualified as a private individual, rather what would have been a VIP, even if he's a member of the royal family. Not to say that in some circumstances he won't get security. The best example is when he went to the coronation. He got public security at that event, but when he left, he had to swap cars before, before he got to the airport. As in, you get limited protection, something that is the usual thing with most royals. Now, when he comes back in June, because he has to attend yet another court case about the alleged cases of phone hacking, he will need to arrange private security. So money is pouring out for that security and also by the fact that he lost his case, he will have to pay the costs incurred by the Home Secretary and the Metropolitan Police. Not to mention that his defeat demoralizes any legal team that he's hired now or in the future. And thanks to Unlikely Bot, we got this glimpse into some court documents and boom! Gingerbread has made the His Royal Highness back. Upon close inspection, yes, you can see the title, His Royal Highness, the whining Prince Henry Charles Albert David, addressing the judge, Mr. Justice Chamberlain. And I'm not an expert, I'm just citing, unlikely bot, but this makes sense, or doesn't make sense when you look at it from the Harkle's crazy point of view. To be clear, this hasn't been added at the court's discretion. This was how Harry's name would have been listed on the application he brought. He is choosing to start reusing HRH. It needs clamping down on immediately. 
Either way, I would love to know what do you think about this in the comments. And in the contradictions that always pop up whenever we are talking about the Duke and Duchess of Sausages, we got this. Gail King, it's troubling that people are downplaying Harry, Meghan, Carr, Chase. That is strange because I remember like it was yesterday, uh, no, I mean five days ago, that we got from the Daily Mail this. Meanwhile, major networks such as CBS hinted that the incident had been overblown with Gail King revealing it was a scary moment, but police tell us it was not as serious as Harry and Meghan said. Maybe she got a call from WME? I'm just really sorry it happened. I'm very sorry they had to go through it. Everybody can have all of their opinions, but I always go back to how did they feel in that moment? Uh, I don't know. Maybe not Meg's smile is a hint of how did she feel in that moment? I'm absolutely sure that Gail, with all her experience in journalism and interviewing people for decades, she must have certain skills with body language. Perhaps she hasn't seen these pictures. That, that must be it. Or this is a much better explanation. Gail King's new show reportedly wants Meghan Markle as its first guest. Hmm, interesting. Let's find out more. Let's rewind legendary TV personality Gail King, who is friends with Prince Harry and Meghan, is preparing to premiere her new CNN show, somewhat ironically titled King Charles. This title comes from King's own last name and her co-host Charles Barkley's first name. I mean, what? Who on the right might... I had to double check the date of this article to make sure it was not April Fool's or, or something. So it's gonna be called King Charles. I don't know if these guys know how Google works, but it is not going to go well for them. Not that I care either. In order to draw in viewers, King and Barkley are reportedly trying to secure the Duchess of Sussex as their first guest. Although whether or not this will actually happen remains to be seen. But wait, it gets worse. Megan is right at the top of their wanted list and Gail and the show's executives believe the Duchess would guarantee an enormous launch audience, a production source said. According to the source, King also wants to be the first to interview Megan with her new, more serious image. Uh, you know that English is not my mother tongue, but even I know that when someone says more serious image, it's a comparison to a previous state. So if she's got a serious image now, what are they comparing it to? Perhaps her experience at Suits? I don't know. I think she took her role seriously. By the way, such a coincidence that Netflix is bringing back that show. I wonder why. Uh, perhaps her experience with Ellen? But to be fair, I am not going to criticize Megan on this one. Because we should never take ourselves so seriously. So good for her. Or maybe the unintended South Park fallout? I know that Megan had nothing to do with this, but it was free publicity anyway. Not to mention, funny as hell. The Prince of Wales got to see the first prototype of a Notpla product that will be used by his prestigious environmental prize. And this is one of the 2022 Earthshot Prize winners that had this crazy, awesome project of replacing plastic with seaweed products. On Tuesday morning, the Prince of Wales visited, visited Notpla in Hackney Wake, London. The sustainable packaging startup won the Build a Waste Free World category at the Environmental Awards in November 2022. And Prince William came to see how the Earthshot platform has helped the startup accelerate its progress. And this picture. The first impression I had with this picture is that William was looking at a strange and unexpected snake skin shedding that they found inside a closet at Frogmore Cottage. But no, of course I'm joking. This is seaweed that Notpla are using for replacing plastic in containers. Since the Earthshot recognition, Notpla has partnered with Just Eat, Takeaway.com, Beat Food, Global Paper Distributor, D 
D.F. Smith and more. Earlier this month, the sustainable startup quenched runners' thirst at the Gothenburg's Varved half marathon in Sweden with his plastic-free edible bubble. Not plus, all my water pots remarkably replaced over 20,000 single-use plastic cups at the race, organizers said in a statement. And this is real, actual change and improvement. That's great. That's what having a massive platform means. I don't forget Prince William's words that he would like royal commentators and outlets and YouTube channels to be less gossip, less body language, and less what are they wearing, and highlight more of the royal family's work. And he's got a point. Well, regarding this, I've got good news and more good news. The first good news is that I will keep doing my thing with memes, gossip, body language, and other shenanigans, because... Let's face it, that was the spirit of the royal robe from the start. But the second good news is that from now on, I will be talking about the impact of the royal family's work as well. Closing in to the one year anniversary of this channel, of that first live we had together, my royal rogues have grown by leaps and bounds. I have just crossed the 5 million views a month, which is something that I never thought possible in such a short amount of time. So, with so many fans of the royal family, I think it's the right thing to do. As usual, let me know what do you think about this in the comments. My royal rogues, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified on my upcoming episodes. The two most important words, much love and bliss.